Hello and welcome to my latest video. So in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the cabinets for with all of the models from the uh, Adepticon 2024 Golden Demon. Well I say all of them, um, I record I had to go in and record this at one o'clock in the morning just so I could get around the cabinets because, um, so if you don't know, Adepticon is open 24 hours a day uh, which means that people are always around the cabinets as, and I just went back in the morning because that was the only time I, I had access really uh, where there weren't too many people to get in the way. Um, but when I recorded this, uh, the majority of entries had been done. The cutoff point was at 10 a.m. the next morning. And I think maybe there was one or two entries that maybe slipped by. But uh, apart from that, uh, you know, this is all of the uh, uh, the entries that were um, put into the Golden Demon. So it was uh, kind of an interesting experience for me. Um, this is the first of the American Golden Demons I've been to. I, I was planning to go to the one that happened just as COVID kicked off and uh, obviously that was cancelled so it's been a little while um, and they've obviously had a few um, of the uh, the US Golden Demons since then uh, but this is just, like I said the, the first one that I've been to so it was interesting to have that comparison to the uh, the UK Golden Demon which is obviously something I'm very familiar with the, uh, the scale of the uh, you know the competition overall is it is a lot smaller than a UK Golden Demon, um, but that's not to say that the the quality of the entries wasn't high. Uh, it just means that there weren't as many of them. Although also having said that, there were quite a few international people entering, including myself. Uh, so it, it it did seem very familiar to me. A lot of familiar faces, friends uh, that um, I obviously see during the UK Golden Demon anyway. Uh, so it was just kind of like. It was familiar, but a little bit different at the same time. The uh, the demon had changed a little bit from um, the, the last UK Golden Demon that I went to. So they have added a new tier. And it's kind of interesting because the uh, what had happened before is the, the first cut uh, would give you a green sticker on your little card next to your entry. And that meant that you would get a finalist pin and the the terminology is a little bit confusing because people would think a finalist pin would be for something that's just before the trophies but actually after finalist pin you would get commended entry and it's from the commended entries that you would select the uh, the winners um, and that is also still true for this case but because uh, the finalist was the first cut as such uh, people you know, were a little bit disappointed if they didn't get the finalist pin because it was viewed as basically the, like, I don't want to say the easy, but the, the very first thing, the, the first stage that you have to get by. Um, and it was a case that sometimes there were quite a few finalist pins giving, given out. I know at the previous uh, US Golden Demon, that didn't happen quite the same way. So if you got a green sticker, it didn't mean that you would get a finalist pin. It just the green sticker was an indication that you got through first cut, and the sad thing about that was because it was so familiar to everyone. For if you got a green sticker, you got a finalist pin. When people went to collect their entries, and they'd got a green sticker on their card, and then they were told they didn't actually have a finalist pin, it could be a little bit frustrating, and I could imagine that you know people would be upset from that. So in this Golden Demon, they added the new tier, which was the noteworthy. Um, tier so that because that comes just before finalist but that doesn't mean so it's not actually a lower tier what the noteworthy um, award was is actually a replacement for the previous finalist one so that's the new standard first cut if you like and then finalist is now a higher tier and so there still aren't as many finalist pins given out so it's a harder thing to get but it also means that it's um, a more attractive award because it is harder to get. Uh, I know before people have been a little bit like because it was the first cut thing it didn't actually mean that much to them whereas now uh, you have to actually get past the noteworthy stage to get the finalist pin and because it's harder to get now actually it does you know it is quite satisfying to get to that level. Uh, and even you know to get the noteworthy thing, I think it's especially nice for people that are starting off on their Golden Demon journey uh, to have now more attainable targets as well. Uh, so after the finalist pin, you have uh, the commended entry stage. 
and the commended entry stage you will get a certificate a little card certificate and I, I don't really know why but in the UK it would be a black card embossed with gold lettering and in the US it's a white card embossed with gold lettering but it's smaller than the UK one as well it didn't matter too much I mean it means the same things uh, but because of the new bump up in levels uh, there were fewer uh, commended entries given out now so it's actually very very hard to get a commended entry in this uh, because basically if you are at commended entry level you're a trophy level painter because because of the way that golden demon is judged judged so you have a gold silver and bronze it doesn't matter how good the quality of the painting is that it can only ever be a gold silver and bronze uh, and if say from the the five commended entry in the category they could all be Slayer Sword or previous Slayer Sword winners, all of equal quality. It doesn't matter. You're still only going to get the gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, so the idea with the commended entry is to show that you know this is a very high level of painting, and basically you are a trophy level painter. And for the commended entries for this Golden Demon, they had pumped up the the quality of it. So you didn't just get a a little certificate which i kind of i appreciated but it didn't feel quite as nice i actually thought the finalist pin was more attractive because it's a little like sort of solid like a little tiny trophy almost whereas you know to get commended which is above finalist you only got a piece of card whereas this time the card came with a frame so you get like a nice uh, special frame that you mount the finalist card in or oh, not finalist the commended card in and it says like adepticon golden demon 2024 so it actually feels like you're getting a trophy this time which i thought was uh, really really nice uh, and then obviously you have the uh, the standard golden demon gold silver and bronze as well so the, uh, it's golden demon is sort of advancing a little bit and it's kind of now becoming more of like a hybrid kind of competition uh which would be like a cross between open and then legacy style so legacy would be you know just awarding gold silver and bronze and there's only ever one of those in the category uh, whereas the open style is that as long as your painting is good enough you tend to go to whatever level you're you're at so you can get multiple golds multiple silvers etc and it's purely dependent on the quality of your painting uh, so it's a little bit now of a mix between the two which i think is nice because um because Golden Demon is advancing all the time. It becomes harder and harder to uh, to get to those top three. Uh, you know, just be, the, there are just more and more very high level painters, and it's all, almost becomes like a roll of the dice uh, to to get a trophy or not now. Um, so whereas to get through up, up to the commended level, it is more based on the quality of your painting. I mean, obviously the, the top three are based on quality of painting as well, but they this. I think they tend to start looking for other things as well, just like how kind of cool or interesting, like what sort of story it tells or all sorts of things like that. Um, the This Golden Demon was also different because they tweaked the categories a little bit. So there's been a little bit of discussion about this online and I'm not altogether convinced by some of the categories, but uh, what they did was they combined Jewel and diorama into one category, which in the case of this golden demon, I don't think was the correct decision because the the jo the joint category there actually had quite a lot of very high quality entries, and indeed the Slayer Sword winner was taken from that category. Uh, they also added a Horus Heresy category, and I'm a little bit in two minds on this one. Um, and again, I was discussing this with a few people, and my initial opinion was that the problem with the Horus Heresy category is that it it covers everything. So you've got single models, vehicles, units, you've got like Primarchs in there as well. Uh, it's the equivalent of taking everything in Warhammer 40,000 uh, for separate categories and just putting it all into one category. And my opinion was that they should all be separated out in the same way that uh, Warhammer 40,000 is separate, separated out. But the response I got was, um, well, if they did that, how many models would be in each category? And in this case, it would be some of the categories would be virtually none. Uh, the Horus Heresy category was not very heavily entered, which I was a bit surprised about because it is quite a, a popular system. Uh, but I can understand people. I think actually that the sort of the mishmash of the category could also put people off. So it. Um, 
like you either have to accept that there's a horse heresy category and you're going to have some weird comparisons between the entrants in the categories or, or that specific category anyway um so you have to accept that or you just have to completely take away the category and have those models spread because you could like you know anything that's horse heresy could basically go into the uh, the warhammer 40,000 equivalent so you got like the unit single model vehicle and monster type things they would fit into those fine i think the only argument is that the uh, the other categories tend to be dominated more by the warhammer 40,000 models because it's a much bigger system so you actually don't really see that much of horse heresy models you wouldn't see that many of them winning uh, so the idea of this is to actually showcase uh, Horus Heresy models and have them be awarded for for being entered. Uh, other new categories, so there was a uh, an Underworlds category, and that was kind of interesting. Uh, there weren't that many entries for it, but the actual the general standard of those was pretty high. Uh, but they also had this a weird system where it was you could enter either a single model or a unit. So again, the 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 judging, I'm not entirely sure how it works out where you judge a single model against a unit because the quality of the painting, a single model is very, very focused in its painting, whereas a unit is painted to be um, very much viewed as a unit. So the un you would judge the, on how well it works as a unit and not just as an individual model. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure how they would be compared, but it turned out that actually all the winners were units anyway. So it, it didn't matter that much. Uh, the uh, another kind of interesting category was the old world category. There was a, a little bit of, of debate on some of the uh, the entries for that. It, it was sort of interesting as well because actually the top three in the old world category, none of them were actually original old world models. Um, the the winner was a a very heavily converted chaos troll um the uh, second place was a completely scratch built bretonian and then third place was a converted cities of sigma model so it almost kind of felt like that category could have just been spread out into the other ones because i understand you'd have like the old world is a different setting but the um those winners they would have fitted fine into the one and because they weren't specifically old world models i don't think it would have mattered to have them separated out or not uh, and then of course you had things like necromunda which again very similar to underworlds where you had either uh, a unit or a single model and uh off the top of my head i think that's it but you know th so th there were various new categories anyway and they were a little bit weird i think the weirdness of them of having various competing um, like units or single models uh, did put people off also because the golden demon was a little bit late in the announce well not so much the announcement but the um the rules because when you are told that um <laughs> that you could enter say for example the horus heresy category it just says it's a horus heresy category you don't actually know what you can enter and so the uh, the release of a, a frequently asked questions uh, was kind of really important to get right and it, i think games workshop dropped the ball a little bit on not getting that out um and because the problem is when you have to spend hundreds of hours on a model to compete in the golden demon uh you could very easily do that and then find out that the uh the entry isn't eligible and then you'll be disqualified which uh again would be like a, a very big shame and kind of it damages the, the competition a little bit as well um in this uh, Golden Demon, there were some discussions around custom models. Now, I know this has been discussed before in previous Golden Demons, and so people will view this as a rules change, I feel, where you are not allowed to get third party custom sculpts anymore. Now, you are allowed to completely custom sculpt your own model. So, if you're really good at sculpting, doesn't matter if it's with like green stuff or putty or whatever or if you're doing it digitally as long as you sculpt it yourself that's fine and you can do that in any category what you can't do is pay a professional sculptor to do a model for you uh, and if you do that then the model will be uh, disregarded in terms of trophies which is a bit of a shame but um, I'm not sure it was ever technically allowed i think it like it wasn't a rule that it was allowed i think it was just a case of that some people 
started doing it and it wasn't picked out um and then people just assumed oh that meant that you could do it which kind of is fair because if games workshop are rewarding those models with trophies then that's kind of like they are endorsing having you know custom sculpts but now they have made it well kind of clear uh, i i feel that the wording could be a bit more clear in the rules uh, but basically you cannot get third or buy third party sculpts anymore uh, to paint uh, and enter in the golden demon which um you know it's either it, it just depends on your perspective whether it's good or bad i i don't particularly mind either way although the custom sculpts do i feel give you a slight advantage because they can they have a, an Im, an impact like if someone's judging models and you know if you work for games workshop and you've seen games workshop models you know countless times over and over and over when you'll see something that you've never seen before the impact of having a like a, a completely unique sculpt would certainly give a, like an impact to the the entry that maybe like a standard painted games workshop model wouldn't necessarily have uh, and it's just you know the painting is just like a nice bonus on top of the fact that it's a, like a, a very exciting um you know individual sculpt there were um, a few discussions on which models go in which category and i feel this is partly due to because of the new categories being entered um or like being available anyway that uh, in previous golden demons so for example if you have underworlds now it used to be that the underworlds category well it didn't exist but the models from underworlds would be used in age of sigma unit and people do custom units so like they'd pick models like, from various uh, sources to to create their unit and quite often they would be underworlds models because they see they tend to be a little bit more um unique and by like, individual so I mean, it's the same thing. But you know, the you get the like a nice looking underworlds model that would be like almost like a unique character, but still part of a like whatever specific army that you could then include in your unit and make it look a little bit more dynamic uh, and just maybe a bit more interesting to paint. And that was very common to do. And you can go back and see like previous entries. Like I think the previous one for uh, the USA actually the the unit category gold winner was. Um, also underworlds like it had underworlds model and models it models in it so what happened in this golden demon was that some people were very specific and entered like say if they did underworlds they clearly entered underworlds models and in other cases people th would pick an individual underworlds model and then enter it in the single model category or you know what that kind of thing all over um, and it got a little bit confusing some models were just left in those categories that they'd been entered in and then other ones got moved um, there was there's also a few specific things like uh, if you entered lord of the rings then you can like the model can only be entered in lord of the rings uh, as a category you can't enter it into the uh, the other categories so for example uh, one of the uh, lord lord of the rings pieces uh, it's like the the wraith on uh, on the road with the hobbits hiding under like a little like a hole under some roots and things that's kind of like a diorama what well, I mean it is a diorama and obviously you've got other lord of the rings single models but what happened was somebody entered a that particular scene into the diorama category and then entered the a model into the lord of the rings ones and then they got kind of stuck because the um because you can only enter Lord of the Rings into Lord of the Rings category, uh, then one of those entries had to be discarded, which is also a bit of a shame, and I think that needs to be uh, quite specifically shown uh, in the rules as well. There is also something that was quite a hot topic, and that was the lighting in the cabinets. Now, I, I really don't want you, when you're looking at the video here, to judge the quality of the painting too much because you really can't see how well uh, some of these pieces are painted because the lighting was absolutely atrocious. Uh, it didn't help that um, half of the room was open to outdoor lighting and then the other half was quite heavily shadowed and only the lighting from the uh, the room would, you know, a bit of bounce lighting from that. And like on top of that they had these 
obnoxious LEDs in the cabinets that were so bright. If you were near to any of the LEDs, you basically just could not see what the models were painted like. Um, it would bleach out all the painting. It would pick up imperfections that were, you can't even see these imperfections on the model. But if you're next to the light, it would just make it look like there are imperfections on there because of the extreme angles of the light hitting it. Um, things were underlit. So if you had like a type of painting that was more like source lighting, you know, top down directional lighting, that kind of thing, then it would completely ruin how the model would be viewed. And it just made it so that it was, well, it was just a really big shame, I felt, because people spend a lot of time on their entries. People come a long way to see entries that they've seen that have been painted and shown on social media, and they want to see them in person. And the, the cabinet lighting was so bad that it made it almost impossible to actually see what a lot of these models were like. So, uh, I mean, for me, it wasn't such a big issue because I know many of the painters and I could see the models up close uh, in private, but for you know people going to the the convention to the golden demon and they want to see these models i just thought it was a really big shame and in fact i think it would have been better to actually turn the lights off in the cabinets uh, and just let the daylight sort of diffuse in and although it would be a bit darker you would be able to see the models much more clearly and how they're intended to be viewed um, but i really do feel that games workshop need to do something about the lighting in the cabinets um, this case this in particular this golden demon this was the worst lighting i'd ever seen uh, the UK one is not so bad, still not ideal, but uh, definitely better than this. So um, if there's one thing I would really like to see improved, it would be that. Uh, just because that's the point of going to the Golden Demon is you want to turn up and see everyone's painted models. And in this case, the only people that are really getting to see these models are the judges. Uh, and I, like I know it's a competition and that's really what counts. So you don't have to worry if your model looks a bit rubbish under the lights or not because when the judges look at it they'll look at, at it under a proper painting light they'll see the correct colors it you know that you'll they'll see it how it's supposed to be displayed anyway and so it will be judged um as fair as the judges will make it fair but for for this it like i don't know it it was a really big disappointment to me anyway and i'm sure a few other people and i think that it, it's also a bit frustrating as well uh, because when you see some uh, pro painters models uh, certain styles in particular they will suffer very heavily under this kind of lighting and then you you come over and you think oh why does it not look the same as when I saw it online and it's just such a really bad setting and a bad impression to give just all around really um, yeah so <laughs> a bit of a, a sore point for me but uh, overall though the the actual you know the running of the golden demon uh, that was really good. Everything, you know, performed really well. I, I did have a slight, maybe unease. So what happens after you have uh, all the judging is complete, and then you go for, uh, then the next day they have the awards ceremony, which is quite exciting. All the uh, people with commended entries get put into the room first. They are given priority seating at the front because obviously they all have to get up to go and collect their trophies. And what they do now, and I understand that the idea is that everyone with a commended entry in a category now gets up uh, in front of everyone, and then the awards are given from those uh, people. And that makes it very exciting, and it kind of like shows how they're all of a very high standard for the uh, for the painting that they've done. But uh, from my perspective, and um, from feedback I had from other people is that it's very daunting. Not everyone's incredibly confident in front of large numbers of people. And if you're in a group and you're the only person that doesn't get a trophy. So what happened was because of the fewer entries in this particular Golden Demon, there were in some cases quite limited numbers of commended entries. And in some cases, in one case in the category, there were only three commended entries in the category. So those those three people knew that they were guaranteed a trophy, which actually for them, that made it, I imagine, a lot easier because there was no concern. You definitely had a trophy. Whereas if you were in some of the larger categories, uh, I think there was like six or seven commended entries. Um, so, you know, there would definitely be people standing up that didn't get an award uh, and you have to do that in front of everyone. And I know for one of the categories, there were four commended entries. So three of them would get an award and then 
there's one person left there on their own without anything and I think that's really kind of mean um, I, I don't think that is very encouraging to get people to, to enter because you're then stuck in front of everyone uh, as the, the odd one out I also think it might be a little bit harsh on some of the uh, the young bloods because remember they're uh, they're a little bit younger and it's n you know not as easy for them to maybe uh, have to deal with a load of adults looking at them and then they don't get a trophy so I think maybe that could be looked at a little bit um, just to make everyone a bit more comfortable um, but yeah so I mean that, that's pretty much my my overall thoughts on the uh, the golden demon just from a, like a, a general perspective um, there were some really really nice pieces that were here you can see was the, uh, the Slayer Sword piece by Alex um, I did actually talk to him he, he showed me some some previews of it while he was doing it uh, and I had a, a good feeling about that entry from quite early on because it was such a unique and creative idea uh, and I'm I'm really happy that he got the Slayer Sword because uh, I think it was very well deserved uh, I am um, yeah, I had uh, a few entries myself. I was very happy to uh, to get a silver trophy in the uh, open competition behind Matt Kennedy, who uh, works for Games Workshop, and he had his amazing skink. I think one of the really important things about a Golden Demon is that you get to go and see the models in the flesh because you actually get to see how big some of them are. The problem I find sometimes with social media posts is that everything is the same size. So if you've got like a Titan and someone else has got a Lord of the Rings model in the photos are the same size. And of course the larger piece will look more impressive because the detail is very heavily jammed into a small space. Whereas for the Lord of the Rings model, even though it's an, like a small picture on your phone, it's still blown up large. Uh, I mean, this could also be true, especially for uh, the small scale category. Though I actually think this is a fantastic category. It was very heavily entered. It was very competitive, fantastic entries in it. Uh, I think that was the uh, one of the big, ex big biggest successes of the newer categories. Um, and indeed one of my favorite it's not ideal for everyone in terms of painting uh, because they are very heavily detailed and it, they are micro details so there's not a lot of space to do any sort of fancy painting with like you know soft smooth transitions and nice lighting effects and stuff like that uh, but you do have to be very precise with, with the painting for that scale but um, it, it is good to have like something like that because they are, it is a very unique category compared to the other categories um, but it was it was also kind of interesting because there was a couple of people that entered single models into that cat category, and by single I mean like one uh, like a model that's like two and a half millimeters tall, and the edge highlighted everything and picked out the eyes and things like that. Uh, so it kind of in those situations, it's kind of ridiculous. But somebody did actually get a commended entry in the category for painting a model like that, which I think is very impressive because. Uh, it's hard to do anything with that um, to, to show it off, to show your skills off with, because basically all you can do is just paint it as detailed as possible. There's not like any like fantastic atmosphere or dramatic lighting you could really make on something that small. Um, so it is impressive that they, they still managed to get a commended entry with uh, with such a small model. Um, but yeah, as, as I say, uh, it does make it kind of interesting to have, you know, such a broad range of models uh, to, to see at Golden Demon and it's definitely making it a more exciting competition so I'm I've already started planning my entries for the next one as well uh, there so it'll be um, Germany is the next Golden Demon um, I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to go yet or not but I'm going to be painting models with the intention of going and I'm going to be making a bit more of an effort in actually making sure I have models done I had some like family uh, problems with well during the process of this and so I had to kind of put aside my main entries but I think for the next Golden Demon I'm going to be ready and this you know taking part in this Golden Demon was a really good experience for me and kind of has got me pumped up and excited for for future entries to see if I can uh, compete with some of the, the new people entering Golden Demon now but anyway uh, that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time